is another low range off-road how-to video. Today we're going to be installing a crankshaft in a 1.3 liter Suzuki Samurai engine. The tools you'll need is assembly lube. Of course you'll need the crankshaft all machined and clean and ready for installation. You'll need a little anti-seize compound, brake parts cleaner. Uh, in addition you'll need scissors, some plastic gauge, thrust bearings, main bearings, and the tools you'll need are a torque wrench, ratchet wrench, and a nut driver, all equipped with 14 millimeter sockets. We've received our block back from the machine shop, all clean, ready for reassembly. Notice the main bearing caps. They're all numbered with arrows facing forward. It's important to keep these caps in that orientation. We begin our crankshaft installation by removing the main bearing caps and setting them aside. Them. Bearing. And then we're going to take out of the two bearings, you have one that's got a little gully in it and one that doesn't. The one that doesn't will go into the caps and you'll insert them into the caps a little stamped mark. Seat them. Be flush there. Install the rest of the main bearings in the main bearing caps in the same way. Then we'll take these main bearings and we'll place them in here. The notch over here. They're, they're and all identical. The they're same. all identical. There'll be an oil hole that lines up there. Then we're going to take our thrust bearings and we're going to put a little bit of anti seize on the back side of them just to kind of hold them in place. Seems to be sticky and so you could use grease or grease or anything whatever that but would hold them in place. And then we'll go with the little notches out. Flat Show me those little notches. The yeah. Flat side will go against the block. Okay. Just lay them right in there. You do that to the both the front and the back. And then you, we're going to set the crank in. We're going to do all this dry because we're going to be um, doing plastic gauge. And then we will go back and lubricate everything. And set our crankshaft down in there. Then we're going to take our plastic gauge. We're going to cut pieces out of it about the width of the bearing and we'll need five of them. And as you get older these get harder to see and to be able to handle. You will lay that down across the crankshaft and you'll do each one of them. The reason for using plastic gauge is to check the oil clearance between the main bearing and the crankshaft. It should be between 0 .030 and 0 .050 millimeters with a maximum upper limit of 0 .080 millimeters. If this clearance is not within specification, you will need to work with your machine shop and parts supplier to resolve this concern. Now we're going to get the main caps. We're going to lay them in there according to their number. And 
and the arrows. Arrow forward. Forward. Don't turn the crankshaft. So you're done plastic gauging. Even though you're not applying full torque to these caps with the nut driver, it's important to use an increasingly tighter crisscross pattern to ensure that the main caps are aligned and positioned properly. Okay, then we're going to take our torque wrench. We're going to set it to 41 foot pounds first. I'm going to start in the middle and just kind of snug them up a little bit before we go into our final torque. Tighten up one side to full torque without snugging the other side, right? Correct. I'm just kind of making sure we're taking them down evenly. Right. I want to remove all the main caps. Loosen them all up. Just want to pull them straight up and off of there. Then we're going to want to take our plastic gauge and I'm going to do it on millimeters and we're going to be between 0 .030 and to 0 .050 maximum of 0 .080. So we're going to lay our gauge down here. Looks like we're A little bit wider than that one. And a little bit. A little bit narrower than that. So one. we're about a point zero four five millimeters. Right between. So right in. Check each one of them. Looking specs on all five of them. And really what we're doing is double checking the machine shop because they've should have they should have everything done right. Right? Correct. And then we'll remove the crankshaft. And we're gonna clean the plastic gauge off of each journal and off of each bearing cap with a little bit of brake clean. And on the bearing cap. Um, you don't really want to, you probably just want to dab because you don't 
one scar of the bearing surface up. Make sure you have a clean rag. Just make sure all that plastic gauge is off of each one. We're going to clean it off the crankshaft. The surface isn't so easy to scratch, so you can put a little more into it. Using some ultra slick assembly lube. Okay. And we're going to lubricate the main bearings. I, I use an excessive amount because I think that there's never too much assembly lube to be used. A little does a little I mean, you can be wasteful yeah. for sure, but. I'm not wasteful, I just like to use it. You want to put a cloth good amount so once you get to the thrust you're going to want to make sure your thrust washer has some lubrication on it put a little bit more so it kind of sits there puddled Then we'll take the crankshaft, set it back in there. Put a little bit of lubricant on each one. Not a whole lot right now. A little more down there in the thrust area. Lubricate each top. Put a little more on each bearing. Arrow forward. Verify you got all your numbers in order. I'm just going to start by running all these down. The final step is to torque the main bearing caps. 
This is done by using an increasingly tighter crisscross pattern until 41 foot-pounds is reached. I'm going to start in the middle and just kind of snug them up a little bit before we go into our final torque. Okay, crankshaft's in, tolerances are good, feels nice, we'll just kind of grab it, check the thrust, good there. That concludes our crankshaft installation. We remind you that all the parts and supplies required for this job can be purchased through our website at www.lowrangeoffroad.com or by calling 801-805-6644.